Hey everybody, Alpaglacy Alpaglacy Trains. Uh, I'm going to do an episode called Shea Day. Uh, Howard has a lot of Shays on his layout, and a lot of them were tucked away in a corner. And Andre Kinesny and I pulled some of these out uh, so that we could get <laughs> Howard to talk to you about them. These are exquisite brass models. They're all HO, obviously, of course. And they are all brass models. Some of you may have a Bachman number no. five Shea. That is not a brass model. These are much larger. And these were made by various different companies. Key, PFM, West Side. Howard has many of them on the layout. We put them in one place so that Howard can give us a little lesson on these beautiful locomotives. So let's go to Howard. Howard, give us a history lesson on Shays. Tell us why. Well, I'm not an expert on Shays. There are people that know a hell of a lot more than I do. However, I love them. But then again, I only discovered them in 1985. I was at a festival in West Virginia, and I wound up in, it was in Pocahontas County, and I heard about the Cass Railway. Mm -hmm. So uh, lo and behold, what is this strange beast hauling these flat cars with people up the hill? And the uh, first time I've seen a Shea. Well, it was love at first sight. I'm not exclusively a Shea modeler, mm -hmm. except on the first videotape that Alan Keller did of me. That was a volume 12 done in 1992. Uh, we had a lot of Shea's pulling cold cars. Now, they were used really for rough track. Most of them were used for lumber. Mm -hmm. Some of Western Maryland used their Shea's. And they had several Shea's actually, besides the famous number six. They used them for um, hauling coal out of Index, Maryland, which is on the western, extreme western part of the state where there are coal mines okay. in, in Maryland. Mm. So uh, we have several models of that. Now the most inter interesting one would be the uh, West Side Imports. They called it the Giant Shea. The Giant Shea. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, big. It was a four trucker. I'll show you. Give you a little bit of history. I know where the. I think that's him back uh, there. No, this is that. This is it right here. Wow. This was the giant shape. Now this like this was built, as far as I know, in 1912 for the Southern Railway. Mm -hmm. They sold it to the Chesapeake in Ohio, who then sold it to uh, our lumber company or Greenbrier Sheet and Milk, okay. and then they sold it to the Western Maryland, which became Western Maryland Number no. Five. And they ran it in Vindex. So about, oh, I think in 1950, then they scrapped it, unfortunately. Now, this is a fantasy law. It's a fan I, I don't know, you know, it has to be fantasy, because this is a, obviously not a, a CNO or Southern or Western Rail or whatever. Right. The Allen Lumber Company. I don't know if the Allen Lumber Company existed, uh, but it looks good. And this now, was. There's two more for Allen Lumber Company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one's West Side Models, you say? Uh, that is a West Side Models called Giant Shape. Jesus. And this obviously had to be custom painted. Yes, I have no idea who painted it. Wow. I bought that at an auction. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful specimen. What's the next one you'd like to show this us? This is seven. This actually is the Western Maryland number six. But I already had a Western Maryland six, which I just found out, thanks to Andre, that I did sell it to him. It's okay. Sold. It's missing. Actually, it's sold. So this is a fantasy piece. I don't like. I can't have two pieces. Number seven. Right. Or number six. So I've been labeling that number seven. Number seven. And the man is happy about it. He's waving at you. Oh, he's happy as a pig. Yeah. And Key Imports did this one. Has done. I like Key. That's great. Now that's Sam Hongza. Sam Hongza. Now you were saying that some of these came with uh, drive shafts that were. Well, uh, according to Roy Brockman, I, I uh, broke one of these shafts one day. Mm -hmm. I was hauling a long train of coal cars. Okay. And the thing just went around in circles. So we brought it over to Roy and he says, my God, they use 5,000 thick wire. So what Roy did was he drilled it all out and put 15,000 wire in right. three spots. That holds this together. Mm -hmm. So it's much more robust. Yes. Much more robust. And I know the, the Bachman Shays, the, the gear you see there in the middle, they would strip because they were plastic or whatever. And these are metal, so they're much more robust. You were saying these these were uh, towboat tugboat motors or tugboat something. Tugboat motors, yeah. Well, I had no idea. Some are two piston, some are three piston, I well, guess. The original Shea was uh, was named for Ephraim Shea, 
he was a logger up in northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. So rather than have horses pull it out, he came up with a strange steam-powered concoction. I think it was in the 1880s, and that was they were called Shays ever since. They were copies. There was a company out in the West Coast that uh, built several ones. I can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus. Now, it don't get old. It really sucks. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> what about the Heisler? The Heisler is another geared engine, yes, but it's the different. Heisler than the Climax. Mm -hmm. Right, and the Climax, and nothing. No, the Climax had a strange sound, and there was a story once that was called the Climax because it sounded like somebody having a Climax. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Oh, it shit. was made by the Climax Manufacturing Company. Wow. Let's talk about these two guys right here. They're Those identical. Them imported by Westside. Okay. Uh, probably built by. Uh, I don't have no idea. Probably I think they're Japanese. And this, they're built for the uh, Hossinger Lumber Company, who had a Fort Truck Shay also. These were smaller. Mm -hmm. These are like 150 tons. Okay. Or the, uh, this over here, the big son of a bitch, the, uh, the big uh, Shay. The Allen, the uh, Greenbrier, ex Greenbrier Shay. Uh, right. That's okay, those were 204 tons. Right. Now, uh, I'll interject one thing. The largest Shay ever built was on the Kansas City Southern. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't know the weight. It was a three truck Shay. It was used for shifting cars, obviously. But that was that was a record holder. I think it was 160 tons. I'm not sure. I I was told I had this version, folks. I had the the cast, the well, the Greenbrier Cheat and Elk River, three truck version. I was told that was the heaviest Shay. Uh, at the time, the, the time the Western Mill Shay was the heaviest. Okay, but we may be wrong in our facts here. But no, no what happened it, it, when they extended it to four truck? Right. Okay. Then it became the heaviest. Then it became the heaviest. Yeah, but the, 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 uh, that was strange. It was kind of a hybrid type thing. And this is a fantasy piece as well, folks. You know, right. Alan. Every, everything here is a fantasy. Right. Every every one of them is a fantasy big. piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These actually are a uh, key. Well, let's see. Some are key. Well, this that are here, Korean. And this is a PFM. Okay. And that was done in the six. I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa. As you were, it was done in the fifties. Oh wow! The Look late at that. 50s. It was called just a Class C Shay, and it runs beautifully. This is just <laughs> number a, seven. Yeah, it's a, it's a brass dinosaur. Wow, look at that little sucker! I mean, it just just runs and runs and runs. Show us the right way to pick it up, Howard. You set uh, it in an angle. You want to well, always pick up a Shay angle inwards like this because if you don't, to go the other way, these pins will come out of the drive shaft. Right, the drive can, shaft. Yeah, right. easily. Yeah, well, I can I'm not gonna say easily. They can go back in, but it takes a lot of work. Right. Two pair of so in other words, folks, what what he taught, what he showed me was to turn it at an angle like this, inwards, inwards before you pick it up, you close this shaft so that when you go to pick it up, and you pick the whole thing up, it doesn't pull out of that shaft. That's yeah. all we're saying here. Now this one over here, my Pickering. Oh yeah, I think that, that was a Cherry River. I'm not sure. That's a neat little that's a PFM Cherry River. I'm not sure where, where that lineage of that. Again, I said I'm not an expert. I just have shades because I like them. Right. I know a little bit about them. You know, well, I guess enough to be dangerous. Right. You mm -hmm. sound a, like a fool. Western Maryland number eight. Mm -hmm. Now, was this really number eight, or was this this? Number eight is a fantasy. Piece. It's a fantasy piece. Western Maryland had a number six, and that was it. Now the uh, later days, they had a number three, number four, number five, and a number six. The number five, as we talked about, was the giant shade mm -hmm. that wound up on the Western Maryland. After the Mauer Lumber Company sold it. These are all custom painted and weathered. A lot of these were painted by Bobby Hunter, who was a great painter. Wow. Now they're beautiful. Actually, Hunter was the one that taught me how to paint. I was served, just like you're serving as my apprentice, uh -huh. I was Bobby's disciple. Wow. Taught me airbrush painting. But you added your little coal spill, which, you oh, know, yeah, I always, did that. always do that. Which Actually, is I'm sorry, this son of a bitch here. I did paint that. Did you paint this one? Yeah, it was a, that was, a, it was an exercise. Wow. Well, yeah, it was Bobby Stu. He was uh, over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was my first shay. I, I, I forgot yeah, about that's that. a nice looking. You know, folks, another thing about these is you better know what you're doing. If you're going to put a DCC decoder in one of these and sound, man, you better know what you're doing because you don't have a lot of room to play with when you get start messing with one of these. And that's why it really is a challenge to put speakers and sound and DCC in these things, these old older brass locomotives. Every one of these has DCC and sound in it. Oh, yes. I think Jan Willard did quite a few yeah, of them. Yeah, I'd be on my, uh, my, my figure. Yep. Wow. Really beautiful, all these. Howard, I really appreciate you taking time to 
give us a, a speech on shays that was most well, excellent. Well, not really a speech. Well, no, a talk, a talk well, on just shays. Well, if, uh, if you never seen a shay, I highly recommend Cass. They're open, uh, I think, from um, May. It was May to October. I think so. I can't well, remember. I got to tell a story, folks, because, look, when I went down there, number five is a big shay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're on a flat car. If you can get on the open flat car in front of the shay, uh, they sound like they're going 200 miles an hour, but in reality, they're going usually around 15 miles an hour. Well, I'll tell you another story. In 1989, uh, I used to play uh, banjo and guitar with the uh, Falling Branch String Band. Mm -hmm. I was, and we had a gig to play every weekend on the dinner train for three wow. years, 1988, 89, and 1990. Wow. And then we just said, it's too much. Because mm. wow. I would drive down every weekend with my instruments, and I'd spend, uh, we Friday, we'd, we'd camp at this campground called Harry Gum's Campground. Right, right. On the side of the hill, on the halfway up the mountain. It's still there, yeah. And we'd sit around, we'd build a campfire, we'd play tunes. People would come over and join us. And during the night, we would do, right, ride the dinner train the next night. Right. During the day, I'd ride the Shea up the hill. Right. I knew a lot of the engineers would come down, and it was a lot of fun. I never really ran it, but I just rode with them. And it was a four, it's a long trip. Then I washed up in the Greenbrier River, and uh, we got ready and we did our concert. Wow. Uh, we, that was done. We, uh, we went up to Whitaker Station. Well, this is the Saturday night dinner train. They had dinners, which were horrible. Right. And they had a little uh, old amphitheater type thing outdoors. Right. And we'd sit on the park benches facing the amphitheater, and we'd play tunes. Wow. Mostly West Virginia type tunes. And it was, it was, it was fun, though. They had a good audience. But... Uh, it, like we then we had to play on the train on the way down, but the noise was so loud we just couldn't play. It was impossible. Right. But it was a great weekend. Then Sunday we stay over again at the campground, and go home on Sunday. Damn, that was my weekend in those years. Well, folks, all I got to say is I mm -hmm. I too strongly recommend you go to Cast because man, I'll tell you what, they sound like they're going 400 miles an hour. They sound like they're going to explode and come apart. The vibration and the physical power of these locomotives is just awesome. And once you see one fired up and see the physical power of it and the amount of soot coming out of it, it is insane. Hey, Howard, I really appreciate you taking some time to tell us about the shows. Well, we just scratched the surface, but there's a lot more we could say, but yeah, it sounds pretty good. All right, hey, thanks, Howard. Okay, thank you.